So now let's discuss some of the key historic as well as current sequencing technologies available today. And so again, like sort of the first generation sequencing approaches that uh, you know were invented started out with the Singer method. Um, second generation methods um, include things like the Illumina sequencing by synthesis approach that we just talked about, um, as well as some other ones that we won't uh, talk about in this lecture. Uh, and then basically you have the third generation sequencing methods, uh, which are basically single molecule, and those are represented mostly by PacBio and uh, nanopore sequencing, which is what we'll talk about today. And so here's just this slide that uh, gives a brief comparison of uh, the three major technologies that we'll talk about in this class. And basically the main differences between them are that Illumina technologies, generally speaking, have a much higher throughput compared to PacBio and nanopore. What that means is that generally speaking, they they overall can produce a larger amount of uh, sequencing reads uh, compared to the other two technologies. Uh, Illumina also tends to have higher overall accuracy, so lower error rate. Um, there, uh, we'll talk later about PacBio sequencing, but um, you can achieve a higher accuracy in PacBio because essentially for any given fragment, you can actually sequence it multiple times, which would obviously decrease your error rate over time. But basically, if you were to only sequence each fragment once, then Illumina sequencing generally yields higher accuracy. Uh, in terms of uh, bias though, it turns out that Illumina technologies, generally speaking, are more biased compared to PacBio and Nanopore. What that means is that, um, for example, Illumina error rates are tend to be much higher for GC rich sequences, for example, whereas PacBio and Nanopore are generally less, uh, the error rate is generally more uniform across different types of input sequence. Uh, and generally speaking, again, Illumina is, uh, it tends to be cheaper on a per base level for sequencing compared to PacBio and Nanopore. Um, where this trade-off comes though, is that Illumina technologies tend to be you know, are used for generating short reads. So they're only really able to sequence reads on the order of a couple hundred base pairs. Whereas PacBio and, and Nanopore can effectively sequence much longer uh, reads in the like hundreds of kilobases long range and nowadays even potentially into the megabase uh, long reads. And so generally speaking, you would select, you would essentially select Illumina if you uh, if short reads are okay for your particular application. Uh, whereas if you need long read, long read technologies, then you basically have to go with PacBio and Nanopore. And so there are, you know, the, the sequence technologies that people use nowadays, again, kind of come down to like Illumina, uh, Nanopore and, uh, and PacBio, but, uh, you know, they weren't really the first sequencing technologies available. And so, uh, the Sanger method was really kind of the the first generation of, of DNA sequencing methods uh, that were used, and it was it was basically invented by Fred Sanger back in uh, back in the seventies. Um, and so this method was uh, initially used to basically sequence shorter genomes. Um, interestingly, Fred Fred Sanger is you know one of the few people who actually won two different uh, Nobel prizes. Um, so that's an interesting tidbit. So DNA polymerase plays a pretty central role in most DNA sequencing technologies. And so just as a brief reminder, uh, DNA polymerase can take a single-stranded DNA template, and after that uh, second strand has been primed, uh, DNA polymerase basically incorporates uh, additional nucleotides in the iterative fashion uh, to elongate that initial uh, second strand in the five prime to three prime direction. Uh, until it eventually, in theory anyways, can uh, completely generate a double-stranded piece of DNA in a mostly error-free way. So the classic Sanger sequencing protocol essentially needs a single-stranded DNA template uh, primer that you can anneal to the start of the template strand, uh, DNA polymerase. And very essentially, you need both standard deoxynucleotides, so that's represented by the DNTPs, and you also need fluorescently labeled dideoxy nucleotides, uh, or what's represented as the DDNTPs. Uh, 
And so the point here is that DNA polymerase, after the uh, annealing of the primer happens, will start elongating uh, that initial primer using the standard uh, deoxynucleotides. But as soon as one of the dideoxynucleotides gets incorporated, uh, elongation will actually stop because uh, the dideoxynucleotides lack a 3' prime hydroxyl group that you typically need to chain two nucleotides together. And so uh, the key point here is that you, when you add in the modified, the dideoxynucleotides, um, you add them in at a much lower concentration than you add in the standard deoxynucleotides. Uh, and so what typically ends up happening is that, uh, you know, the uh, DNA polymerase will elongate uh, the chain and only infrequently will you actually incorporate a modified base and stop elongation. And so the idea is that um, in this Singer sequencing setup, you have four different chambers where in each chamber you only add one of the, uh, the dideoxynucleotides. And so you're only in, in each kind of chamber, uh, you're only stopping the chain at, at one specific kind of predetermined base. And so what you can do is that um, after you after your multiple rounds of elongation, uh, basically you, you end up with a whole collection of fragments of different lengths. And so these uh, double-stranded DNA fragments are denatured, and then you're basically size sorting them using gel electrophoresis. And so what you're going to end up with is uh, a gel that looks like uh, the gel shown on the bottom right here, where basically in each kind of lane, you have a lane corresponding to a chamber where you had only um, one modified uh, dideoxynucleotide base. And so you're going to end up with, uh, you know, when you have a high enough concentration of uh, molecules, uh, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of bands um, where the elongation stopped. And so the theory is that you can start, basically the, uh, the shortest sequences will obviously travel the farthest on the gel. And so you can essentially read, uh, read your DNA sequence by reading the gel from the bottom to the top and looking at, for each row, um, which letter happens to, or which chamber uh, happened to produce a sequence uh, of that particular length.